Ladies and gentlemen from the Microsoft Theater here in downtown Los Angeles, brought to you by Sean Porter Promotions. I almost said, ah, oh, dang, I had to say something. I ain't gonna say it about my family on the show. That's crazy. The red light is on. Yeah. That means it's on, right? Yeah, man. It, yeah, yeah. I'll, man. Switch. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it's a great day. It's uh, crazy. Today is the 14th of April, Sunday. And uh, two thumbs up. <laughs> we got Satel in the building. <laughs> Welcome to the Port Away Podcast. And for, for a very long time, we it's been a long time since we had you on an actual podcast episode, man. Great photo that you guys picked. Uh, very flattering. Well, you know, we, we do the best we can, you know. <laughs> uh, how you feeling, big dog? I feel great, man. I'm happy to, to be on the show. I'm grateful yeah. to you and Ant to, to be back on. You guys having me and... Um, Little, little, little tight, little tense. First, it's like first day back to school, but sure. uh, just ready to talk some boxing, man. Uh, sure, talk some boxing. Not- well, when like you and Carson stepped away, people always ask, "Can I join? Can I join?" I'm like, "Bro, you can never. You can always come on and do the show, but you and Carson always got y'all seat here at the Point Away Podcast. That's awesome. You know, Carson comes. With, you know, I don't think he came on yet this year. He may he, give us. He's been in that couch before, but this year. Oh no, 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 no. He, may, he may give us one show this yeah. year. He may, he may. What, what you do? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'll do it too. Yeah, yeah. no, he may, he may but, come you know, here. Uh, this is what we started with. That would be a dream come true for me if the three well, y'all was on the same, if y'all was right. <laughs> <laughs> bunched in and shit. It's I'll like, sit in the middle. Well, it's like the old, the old, the uh, old grandparents. Yeah. The grandkids finally come to visit. Yeah. That's, that's how you'll fill everybody together. Oh man, that's what I do, man. I bring people together. Been doing that my whole life, so it ain't gonna stop here. Um, got a lot to cover. Yes, sir. Uh, happy to be on, live on Patreon right now. So what's up to to those who are on our Patreon? If you're not on the Patreon, you watching this and it's Tuesday, or you watching this and this is Wednesday, you missed the premieres. You missed the good stuff. So you gotta subscribe man. to our Patreon. Get on that, man. We about to load that bad boy up with a lot of uh, a lot of content that you just not gonna get on the regular podcast channel. Um, and uh, you know, I gotta, I got, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to do a grand interview with you, big dog. Okay. So um, we gonna, then we, 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 we gotta get one with him too. I, I thought about that when he was coming in. And I said, man, I should probably get one. I should get some. We should do it together. We should, we should interview to tell. No, man. yeah, do that. No, I'm not gonna do y'all together. Man, pay attention, man. That's two episodes in one, and then oh, we lose. Oh, oh, you trying to gain? You trying to come money. on now? <laughs> no, no, for real though. Um, download the app. Uh, Patreon, download mm. the Patreon app, and there's a tier on there for you, TPWP. That being said, you gotta get your Mark Kriegel on though. You gotta make us cry. Yeah, yeah. You I gotta do it. Try, try to get us to cry. Yes. Since you're a big Longhorns fan. Funny you say look that. Look at shoes. Look at shoes. <laughs> Texas but, Longhorns, yeah. Uh, not the Longhorns, but funny you say that. You um, liked Ricky Williams when he won the Heisman. Yeah, that, yeah. Yeah. I, I was a big Ricky yeah. Williams Me fan. Too. Yeah, yeah, big Ricky Williams fan. All the way until he was done. Run, Ricky, run. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. yeah. Ricky was... Ricky destroyed my uh, my uh, franchise. He traded all that stuff away. Just oh, the Saints. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it took us, yeah. uh, contr- took us a hurricane to recover. <laughs> Don't laugh at that. <laughs> Sean. Too much. You know, you too much. <laughs> Why are you only laughing? Why are you going to say? Even the director's not laughing. They laughing right now. No one's so, laughing. No, you don't know. He didn't get the joke. Was it a joke? Aaron Brooks <laughs> took him to the playoffs, right? Yeah. And then, so wasn't Listen, all bad. man, you anyway. got some you got some new stuff going on. Let's talk about the new stuff you got going on. Yeah, man. Um, you know, um, last week, last uh, was my last fight, the Richardson Hitchens Limos fight, Gustavos Limos uh, last fight with uh, Fight Hype, and so grateful for the work that I did there for six years. Proud of the work I did. Uh, you know, they're a juggernaut that's going to continue to be a juggernaut in the boxing media. And uh, I'm really, you know, just grateful for everything I learned there. And, um, you know, I have a long and and tough but really exciting road ahead of me. And I feel like, you know, with my, I've been in boxing media since I was 19, actually 15, if you even can Mm. count the little, or 14, if you count the little fight I covered when Antonio Margarito knocked out Shotgun Gomez at the Aladdin, which is the planet Hollywood now. But yeah. but really over 10 years, and um, I'm just excited to use all the experience I had uh, so far covering to, to try to do my best work yet. Yeah. And really, the, 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 the my main goal um, here on out is there's a lot of guys that do interviews in the field, great work, um, but they uh, oftentimes won't speak on the sport, uh, or at least kind of critically, 
because you have to see these people in sure. real life, sure. right? Yeah. Sure. Very understandable. Sure. And then on the other side, conversely, there's a lot of people that give these really entertaining, cutting, truthful critiques that, you know, like I said, is entertaining. Um, you know, sometimes people want it raw and uncut. Problem with that is a lot of those people aren't interviewing fighters in the field. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of becomes this pick and choose. You, you got to pick one or the other. Mm -hmm. And what I'm going to try and make happen is do both. Yeah, is off shop. offer honest insight, honest critique, whatever. Give an mm -hmm. honest assessment of each fighter, what they're good <clears throat> at, what they're not good at, who I really think is going to win. Yeah. But do it in a way that basically I'm not going to say anything I wouldn't be comfortable saying if they were here. Yeah. So... I'm going to try and walk this line of being objective and truthful but respectful enough to where I can still interview these men and women mm -hmm. to their face and maybe they don't like what I said yeah. but they don't feel disrespected by what I said. I feel like yeah. I'm in the in the boat that you're that you're speaking on right, right now and I know we'll get to it but a couple more things on you. What's the name of your, the platform that you that you're working with now? I thought <clears throat> really hard and long and came up with a oh, very Lord. original name. I called it Sean's Zatel. Shans to tell what? Just that's it, baby. No, not Shans to tell boxing. I mean, no, no. Everything is something, something boxing. So yeah, I feel yeah, like, I, you know, so, <laughs> I, you, you know, J Joe Rogan, Pat McAfee, and, and yeah. they're, they're. Oh, you, oh, you on Shaw, that level. But, okay. I, I, I'm okay. not. Okay. <laughs> if I could be one, okay. one tenth of that level, I'll be happy. Okay. But I feel like, you know, I don't really have a mind for, for marketing and branding like that. And, um, so no 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 bells and whistles. It's me and uh, or Listen, Demetrius Andre would say it's me again. I, you know me. I'm always good for some some motivation. So the thing I'm going to tell you is, take a page from my book. I didn't start this thing by myself and 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 then go. You know I started this thing with everybody I felt was necessary to make it go. You know what I mean? Hey, so feet. come on, bring get your team and uh, and and get it cracking because uh, you know. It, it, it reminds me of when I started inside PBC Box and I looked in the mirror and I had a conversation with myself. I said, whatever you present people with, this is what they're going to expect moving forward. So be yourself and have fun. You know what I mean? So whatever you present these people with, start that right here and, and continue to keep going up. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, Actually, then, one guy <clears throat> I want to mention too, because yeah. th those guys I mentioned who are just known on a name basis, <laughs> that's a bit lofty. Um, one guy I was inspired by in the NFL covers the 49ers. You guys know I love the 49ers. Mm -hmm. I got to cover the Raiders this season and then saw the Niners lose in person in the Super Bowl. Right. But one guy that covers them is a guy by the name of Grant Cohn. And uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not as, I'm not as tough on the mic as he is. I'm a little, little, little nicer. Yeah. But he, man, he tells it like it is. And he's right there in the player's face every mm -hmm. week in mm -hmm. practice. He wraps up the game. Then he records right there at the game. You can see the Niners in the background, and he tells it like it is. And, uh, yeah, that was another guy that, that kind of inspired me to say, okay, let's, let's tell the truth. I'm going to be a little kinder about it than, than Grant is sometimes, yeah. you, know, you know. But, um, but yeah, that, that's I, the goal. I'm looking forward to interviewing you. I definitely would will, will love to add you to my interview list as well. When did you start boxing? I was, when I had my first amateur fight, I was 15, and you know I what? didn't get, huh? No, I lost that one. <laughs> you but he I, heard what you uh, said, huh? <laughs> he <one>. heard you. <laughs> uh, I, <laughs> I won the next two, though. So. Okay. All right. No, no. <laughs> two and one, that's it? You one. just had three three that's fights? It. Yeah, that's it, man. And um, that was from my main boxing was just 2005 to 2006. Yeah. And then 2007, I, I messed around a little bit. And then 2009, I had this little three-month mini comeback that did include sparring mm -hmm. Diego Magdaleno, <laughs> who, you okay. know, went on to fight Pitbull Cruz and okay, yeah, fight yeah. Tiafimo Lopez. Okay, and okay. So, you got a resume. Right. I, I was I was <laughs> yeah. decent enough coming back that they said, okay, he's tall. We need a tall guy for sparring. Sean, can you spar Diego? And, yeah. Let's not um, forget that Diego uh, got knocked out hey, very early. Hey, hey, well, anywho. Hey, <laughs> who did he spar? Professional. <laughs> <laughs> but that was my, the point of my question. Yeah. A lot of people who cover boxing... One of the things that I've noticed in the boxing world, everybody always wants to say, well, what did you do? What gives you the, the right to say this? What gives you the right to critique somebody and talk about him having his hand down or right. the punch that he got hit with? You know, hey, you're talking about being someone that's not going to go after athletes, but hey, keep it real and call you if you need to be called on. Call you on the great stuff and call you on the bad stuff. We all have good moments. We all have bad moments. 
our goal as fighters, as athletes, is to have so many great moments that you forget about the, the bad ones. You know what I mean? But at the same time, when you are putting yourself in that position, I want everybody to know, like, when you go to Sean Sattel's, uh platform, you're going to get the best, the rawest, the education, but it also comes from somebody who has experience in the gym, in the rain, sweating, getting hot, fighting, sparring with, with, with real professionals, and the list goes on, not somebody who's just a fan of it and decided to start a channel, you know well, what I mean, so... Well, it's the two are correlated. Like a great critic, people when they hear critic, they immediately think criticism. Mm -hmm. But to to be critical is to have to critically think, mm -hmm. which means you're thinking deeply mm -hmm. and really trying to you know analyze what's going on. Mm -hmm. And that's a misconception that a critic is just always critical. No, the job of a great critic is all just as important as it is to dole out legitimate, constructive criticism. Is great praise. So I, it's it's correlated. Like if you don't, if you're not honest sometimes in your critique, your praise isn't going to be able to be as authentic and as beautiful right, either. Right. You know what I mean. Right, and right. Um, and just to touch again on on the boxing background a little bit, uh, the I was trained by Augie Sanchez mm -hmm. in my amateur fights. Augie fought Floyd Mayweather four times. Mm -hmm. He was brought up by his dad and Pat Barry. And Pat Barry um, was like twelve and five. The guy who owns Barry's Box, you yeah. know him. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. He um, he was kind of a Custia Amato um, from New York, disciple. Right? Yeah, from yeah, New York. Yeah. And he was really good friends with the Quarry brothers. Okay. Irish, Irish Pat Barry. Yep, yep, Jerry yep. and Mike Quarry were yep. Irish. Uh, Jerry fought Ali. Mike fought Bob Foster. Mm -hmm. So he kind of taught us at Barry's the, the hands up, you know, New York peekaboo style. That's all I, I, all I ever learned was catch, catch. <laughs> yeah. I never could move my head. Uh -huh. I, you know, but we, but <laughs> it was good because he never taught me anything too fancy. It was uh -huh. just, you know, that's it. And yeah. Yeah. But so that's that's the little background. And then, of yeah. course, I got to ask you, um, I referred to you earlier today as the, the as a boxing encyclopedia. Where does that come from? I, obviously, you have your mind, which you were just blessed and gifted with. But when did you really start, like, paying attention and, and studying boxing? Well, um, I was after De La Hoya Hopkins. Like, I really fell in love with it for good. Yeah. Even though it wasn't that great a fight, Bernard knocked him out to the body, but Remember I was that? so captivated by Bernard yeah. and his story. Yeah. So we had LimeWire at the time. Yeah. And type in <laughs> just all these fights that I had heard about. Yeah. You know, you got to watch Sugar Ray Leonard. You got to watch this. You got to watch that. So I would de type him in Sugar Ray Leonard, Thomas Hearns. Yeah. Oscar De La Hoya, Felix Trinidad. Muhammad Ali, Joe Frazier. Download all of them. Watch all of them. My friends would be, oh my God, this fight is so amazing. Morales Barrera, we were like, when we watched Morales Barrera, we're like, damn, we didn't know boxing could be this good, yeah. could be this exciting. Yeah. And, and so um, so then what happened was I uh, I didn't want to keep watching them in LimeWire quality. Yeah. So Ray, <laughs> Ray Torres, who was the great interpreter for HBO Boxing, he was the best. Okay. Um, yeah, Ray Torres, fans will remember him. Yeah. I'm, I'm ringside at... Uh, Calvin Brock was fighting at Caesars in 2006. Oh, they set up a little that. arena outside Caesars. I remember talking to Max Kellerman that day. He was very nice, nice to me. Yeah, and, good, and, good, and, good, uh, good. You know, and um, I was like 15 at the time. And Ray Torres is ringside in the undercard. And I'm telling him, he's telling me Barrera was cool, Morales. He's telling me who was nice, who wasn't, that he translated for. And he's like, if you really want some high quality fights, I know a guy who sells DVDs online. He gave me the site. And I went ham on my mom's credit card. I, I bought like two hundred dollars. I, I think I got Dela Hoya's career set, Sugar Ray Leonard's career set, and then it just became a thing where every month mom's credit card got abused for yeah. some fight collection. <laughs> but I don't think in the end she minds who. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, look at where you at now. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, nonetheless, man, we proud of all of the work we've yeah. seen you do uh, with the podcast, without the podcast. Give me, and then we'll move on. But give me. One or a couple, you good off the top of your head. A couple of like uh, your favorite or best or greatest experiences Ooh. with Fight Hype. Ooh, that's uh, man, there's a lot. I know it all is. Uh, man, I just think be, being able to say that you were with Fight Hype, it probably it definitely probably opened some do definitely had to open some doors that it just otherwise wouldn't have. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, and it allowed. I think. You know, a, a lot of great interviews. I think it was the off-the-camera stuff. Getting mm -hmm. to see, like, a young Devin Haney in the gym, Tiafimo Lopez in the gym. This, this whole era of guys that are b becoming stars right now, I got to see them as teenagers and as young men, yeah. you know, with the cameras off and, and really work their craft. Yeah. 
And I, I don't, I don't know if I'd have been able to ha do that without the, you know, being on a big platform like Fight Hype. So, yeah. I mean, there's so many interviews that I'm, you know, I'm proud of. But yeah. really, the first thing that you asked me that comes to mind is the off the camera stuff, getting to have the access to mm -hmm. see the best fighters in the world work at their craft. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Well, listen, man, we're proud of you. Uh, happy to have you in here today. I got a gift for you, big dog. I, I got a, I got a gift for you. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, man, it's for it's you. It's a boombox. Yeah, man, it's a, it's a, like a like a not, do the right thing 1989 boombox. Yeah, box. man, yeah. Why don't you pull that bad boy out? All right. Yeah, pull that out. Yeah. I feel like um, Debo and Trent Williams when they when they come out with the boombox for the what Niners. They, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> That's the same company. Come on, clear your throat and, and do the do the thing. All right. Do the promo thing. This, you know, Debo. Do the promo thing. Uh, Trent come in like this, and you know the Niners mean business. Yeah, shout, yeah, but, shout yeah. to my yeah. guy, Boombox. Trey, Trey the Truth, this is his company. Go to boombox.com with two X's. You can get all his merch. Shout out to Trey. They showed us a lot of love down in Texas. Show. And, uh, yeah, this is the 49ers. They also was uh, part of the women's Final Four. Let's see. We're going to get a... Uh, we're going to get a... To a couple of our people, set them up, get them into the sport of boxing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. that'd be go. It's not your gift, but I had to, I had to have a reason to pull it out. Um, so I, yeah, I just that sucks because I, I could have went to Brooklyn. I'm going to Brooklyn. This, this was very. <laughs> oh, you pull up in Brooklyn? Very with Brooklyn. That? Oh yeah, for no. sure. We can if we want to. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, but Ann already did it. Boom, uh, uh, bump box with two X's dot com. And again, shout out to Trey. That interview we did with Trey is, I, I believe that one is public, and it yeah. is also on the Patreon as well. We got some behind the scenes stuff with Trey on the Patreon too. So make sure you check that out. Let's get to some boxing. And another thing oh. to, to Zytel before we. Uh, get to boxing. I told you I tell a long time ago. I said, bro, you the best to do it. You the best in this. I know there's things that you wanted, positions you wanted, and uh, sometimes I tell you, you got to go on your, out on your own and reap the benefit of your own. And then, because I'm like I'm out of my own now, with my own company. And I had another company call me, offer me a big deal that I always wanted when I was with the other company. Mm -hmm. I said it's too late, baby. I'm out of here. Right. But I, I feel like you're the best best to do it when it comes to this boxing talk, man. And it's not even close. Like when it's all said and done, you'll be, you will be probably the first YouTube Hall of Famer <laughs> that goes into boxing. Like I feel like you that you that guy when it comes to this. I know you don't want to accept all the praises, but when it comes to this, bro, and it's not. I don't think there's nobody out there like you, bro. No, I, I really appreciate that and yeah. hope to live up to it. But I um, having to start anew, it definitely humbled me a, a lot yeah. and I already respected everyone in my field mm -hmm. but all these guys um you know KO Artist Sports and, and Champ Side and um man so many Fino Boxing and there, there's so many people I, I work alongside that I had respect for but having to start a new I have that much more respect for mm -hmm. for the brands they've built up and so yeah, yeah. Shout out to all my peers in the yeah. field because they, they do their thing. You got brothers over here at, at, at uh, the Portaway Podcast. So yeah. whatever you need, whatever yeah. you're doing, we're part of it. So yeah. um, you got hand claps. Why don't you just push the button? Yeah, and, we got a guy that <laughs> we don't have the soundboard shout today to for some reason. Said, if you need him to come over to the house, set up everything up in there. My God, they set you up in there. Oh my God, we got you, man. We got you. We are gonna rock with you. <laughs> Yeah, because don't forget about us when you blow up. So go to YouTube <laughs> and put in Sean Zatel. Sean Zatel. Although someone stole my name, I have like I have to go Sean Zatel ninety. No, the channel's name is Sean Zatel, but the little at is Sean Zatel ninety one. Someone out there apparently has my name for YouTube. I, I, if you're listening, please. <laughs> give my name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? He said, please <laughs> give it back. You know. Yo, let's get to Thank some you. boxing. Yeah, uh, I know there was a lot going on in the boxing scene this weekend, but. I only got to ESPN, and I felt like you know ESPN did did some good things this weekend. Great fight, co-main event. <laughs> yeah, co-main. I got you, Sean. Yeah, go. I got you. I ain't gonna be like you no, do we me. Know. We had Guido yeah. and FA. That was a really good boxing good match. Good fight. It was. Uh, and how did you score the fight? It could have been a draw to me. You had FA win. Yeah, I mean, I guess. Well, say it, damn it. You I had, had FA win. win. I want a rematch. You want a rematch? Run this huh? back. Yeah. Run this back. I understand you moving off in your career. They gave him the WBC hat, shirt. Nah, 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 nah. He done with that dude. That was a quality heavyweight fight right there. Zatel, if they did some, some serious features on each fighter before they got in the ring and fought, do you think 
the public, the boxing world would be interested enough in a rematch of these two guys? I mean, it's not. Yeah, it could it could headline its own ESPN show. You know, that's what I'm. Yeah, yeah because yeah, you know, while we, his, you, you know, I mean, traditionally, they did, they did Ife Ajag with Joe Goodall as a main event. I think this rematch is a stronger main event than Ife Ajag with Joe Goodall. Oh, uh, so, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, but my point is, you know, traditionally, one fighter moves up, the other fighter either stays stagnant or goes down, and it's like, yo, this fight was good. Man. It was it was competitive. It was close. We saw both guys make. Well, we saw. Yeah, we saw both guys make adjustments, whatever the case hurt. may be. But I, I'm. I, I love rematches because I feel like there's more that we can more more to the story that we know, mm -hmm. and then we have we're connected to seeing what which fighter did more in the second, which fighter made the right adjustments, which fighter did more in training, and the list goes on. And so, before the the, the announcement of the decision, I was like. Damn, like this is one of those fights where I hate to see one fighter win because I know that the other fighter definitely, even though he isn't going to win, he deserved a win. He deserved a draw. He deserves another shot at this guy. But this guy is probably like, you know, on his way up, you know, and it's like, damn, like this was a good boxing match that I think people could really wrap their heads around it seeing again, you know? Yeah, no, I mean, we damn phone okay. no but Guido Vianello <laughs> like yeah he, he fought very spirited effort in losing and he was uh you asked Ant how he scored the fight I thought it was an easy fight to score I thought he was up mm. three rounds to nothing and then Ife won six in a row the and then rounds. he definitely won the 10th round I Guido so, did That's so, what I so, so six to four but yeah. um just to get just to break it down for a second you could tell that Guido was looking for the the, the pull right hand Mm -hmm. uh, over the top of the jab, mm -hmm. and he landed it in the first, and then yeah. he hurt him in the second, they yeah. hurt him in the third. Yeah. But even while he was winning the fight, he wasn't as comfortable and as composed as a Jagba. Yeah. He was jittery. Yeah. And and the way he unloaded when he hurted him in the third, or hurted him, when he hurt him in the third, <laughs> was it was almost like a little bit of desperation. Uh -huh. or it was like, I don't know if I could beat him over 10 rounds. This is my chance. You Let mean me like when he went after him, yes. right? Yeah. And, then and it was kind of ugly how he went after him. Well, he almost he ended shoved up, him off. Yeah, like yeah, he, yeah, he yeah, was yeah. so excited. Like right. he this almost ended moment. up this like, yeah. And I was like, I kind of felt like Guido was really amped up and knew exactly what he needed to do. I kind of felt like F.A. was asleep. In the beginning of the fight, I felt like I didn't. I didn't feel like Fa was comfortable. I felt like he needed a couple of rounds to really get himself going. I felt like getting hurt is kind of like woke him up to that sense of urgency to put his foot on the gas pedal and go after Guido right. instead of allowing Guido to come after him. And I felt like that was really what changed that fight. And I love that in the heavyweight division, you have to survive being hurt. You're gonna get hurt most likely. Yeah. Neighbor said the fighters getting hurt. Yeah. If not getting stopped. But he's like, as I tell, say he stayed composed no matter what, mm -hmm. and eventually he got into his rhythm. Mm -hmm. It was hitting him with some big shots, mm -hmm. and yeah, I definitely the middle rounds. I was just thinking maybe he got one, but still, for just getting the first three rounds, like you guys say, I still want to see the fight again. Yeah, in the tenth, any close? Yeah, shot. yeah, yeah it was still a good fight, man. Uh, where Jabba goes from here? Well, I mean, he did. He he. I saw some improvement. I know what they lined like, him up for. <laughs> how I feel, but what? Yeah, Jared, it makes or, sense. Or that's how I feel. I feel Jerry in. I don't think they're keen on fighting each other, though. And then, I don't know, maybe maybe Jay Prince, who manages both, is why I get one of my guys knocked off. Let me see. Let me expand them each on their own as Two far as I possibly okay. can before yeah. I have to match them with each other. I don't I know. I feel like this is the second card. They've been on the same card. Am I, I wrong? Think so. Yeah, they've been, on, they've been on a card before, yeah. 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 And so I kind of felt like that, too. Usually, yeah. or kind the of, business. when you see a co-main and the main the same weight clash, you can kind of look like, hey, this, they may be lining this up. But um, I think it makes sense for I, it makes sense for Jer Jared Anderson. Yeah, I think it's more. Obviously, we haven't got to his fight yet. Yeah, I think that's way more entertaining. The job was gonna come to win the fight. Yeah, I would yeah. favor Anderson in that fight. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. It, but um, no, Ajagba. It's a new Ajagba. Shout out to his his coach Flick, who, who yes. trains out here. I because uh -huh. I could see definitely new wrinkles in his game mm. and. His performance was kind of the definition of slow and steady wins the race. Yeah. You know, and yeah. his timing was good. Yeah. He, be, he out jabbed Guido halfway through. Guido was doubling and tripling and using his feet to maneuver around off the jab. Yeah. But he was just slow and steady, good timing, bink, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and time yeah. him with one at a time. I saw more more jabs than, yeah. I, than I've previously seen. 
and I seen him going to the body. I when I saw him going to the body, I said, I said, yo, this kid F.A. that came to the ring with something tonight. And much, much more than I expect. And and the same with Guido. I'm on record. I was having a conversation with Dr. Rob. I said, man, Guido soft. <laughs> I just fly. I said, man, Guido soft. And when he came out the way he came out in the first round, I said, okay, this kid came ready for this one, understanding, hey, my back's against the wall. And then the next two rounds went that way. I say, all right, Guido. Mm -hmm. We had a good fight on our hands last and, night. And, and then he surprised me, you know, um, the way he was able to hold up to the uppercuts and to the body and the yeah. body attack. And yeah. It looked like he was getting broken down mm -hmm. in the fourth, fifth, sixth to the body. Mm -hmm. he, uh, F.A. kind of went away from that a little yeah. bit. Then he switched yeah. southpaw, yeah. which he had some success with, but it was also... I, and uh, I know, really but, wanted, when he switched to southpaw, I wanted Guido, Go! Like, this kid switched. This is not what he's used I to. I think he tried. He barely got a jab this way. I mean, he got right, a jab right, this right. way. Now, you can't. it's impossible for him to pick up the jab over here and have something nice over here. I was like, man, go get him. Put them feints together, that movement. He stopped moving. I felt just as much as F.A. started doing things better, I felt like Guido regressed a little bit as the fight continued. Especially, I kind of felt like he kind of looked like he was trying to preserve himself after that third round where he was letting loose and didn't get it. So, Well, he uh, well also... Um like he would FA's distance was better tonight like last night. Yeah. Like he he knew the times he was jumping in with his jab and was catching him with the right uppercut mm -hmm. doing it. Mm -hmm. He had a couple of times where he got his head off the line and then used the momentum to shoot mm -hmm. the left uppercut. Mm -hmm. So again, credit to his trainer. He when he first started from uh Nigeria, he was like you know, 70, 80 punches around. Just come forward and throw a lot of punches. I remember and, that, yeah, just doom, doom, and then doom, and then, you know, um, it, it was like he got a little Americanized, a little civilized, and and and, and it, I feel like the Frank Frank Sanchez loss. Well, that was the bottom him out moment. Yeah, that's when you, I got to do something else. Right there, you go, and and so this is the new, you know, reinvented FA Ajagba. Mm -hmm. So I like it, man. Me I like too. the new FA. I never thought I'll see this when I've uh, seen him probably at ten and zero. I I never <laughs> thought he'd be this. I'm gonna be honest. Yeah, he looked really good last I, night. I never thought he'd be yeah. at this point. Yeah, salute to Hefe. Yeah, he looked man. really good and last night. And the Guido, night. Yeah. yeah. And I'm and down Guido. for a rematch, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I am down for a rematch. Well, well, Guido, you're not soft. <laughs> no, yeah, no. Yeah, no. Not as soft as I thought you were. Great <laughs> old man <laughs> leads to us. What do you think us? this is, Sean? You think we're soft over here? Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> you think we don't got fighters? Coming in hot. Great old man leads to a. Hey, listen, let's just talk about what, what Jared Anderson ain't going to do moving forward. Yeah, Jared Anderson just got a bad uh, sparring partner last night. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I, you know, I was thinking... Uh, yeah, my dad wouldn't have brought him back for sparring. Riyad Mary? Yeah. Like, that was a fight. My dad, if if I spar, if my dad, if my dad brought somebody in to spar with me, and, and he they fought like and that, he sparred the way he a, fought last fight? Night, he wouldn't have come back. He wouldn't have came back. My dad, look, look, true story. My dad would have said, because we sparred on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh -huh. <laughs> my dad would have said, get his ass on Thursday, because you ain't going to see him again. I don't mean to crack on no boy Bro. Mary, but... Man, that just wasn't what we needed, man. We we Jerry needed a, a, a good performance, somebody that would just give him some effort. Yeah. My man showed up to just survive and get a paycheck. I I tried to pump him up a little bit you did? and twit and on Twitter. What'd yeah. you say? Well, cause I was like, yo, he he's this the heavyweight division. He Belgium. He he no, I ain't saying nothing about being Belgium. But I said he's uh he's he's explosive and strong and unpredictable. Those that's the worst nightmare in heavyweight division, in the heavyweight boxing, because one punch could, could put you out of there. Mm -hmm. And we've seen in the past, Jared did a good a good job of going going down, but also moved out a lot, mm -hmm. too, moved straight back a lot, too. That's been his Achilles heel when he fought Charles, Charles Martin. You didn't see a lot of that last night. Well, the kid, the other guy didn't well, let loose, yeah, yeah, yeah. which but I thought uh, might, might happen, you yeah. know? So I tried to hype him up after three rounds. I was like, oh, man, this is how this one going to go. Well, to continue to hype him up, he was a sneaky counterpuncher with fast hands. 100%. And some of the best work Jared was able to get done was to the body. Mm -hmm. And and I'm sitting there, you know, come on Jared, go to, you know, make him make him, you know, freeze him up top on the ropes and then dig to the body, make right? Him drop his hands. But I'm asking, I'm also to be fair to Jared, I'm asking a guy to reach down to the body against a sneaky quick yeah. counterpuncher yep. who's a half foot yeah. shorter than you and you're trying to reach down. It's not as easy as it looks, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I did feel like Jared let some of the frustration set in after the second or third, mm -hmm. and maybe that frustration messed with his um, ability to create mm -hmm. and problem solve mm -hmm. and you know figure out 
what where the opening is, mm -hmm. what you got to do. Do you got to bait him to open up? Good luck. He threw eight punches around. But I was gonna you, say, you know, man. Yeah. Listen, bottom line, I was like, yo, Jared, don't don't push the tempo. Yeah. Don't don't force anything. Let's get out of the ring. Let's get out of here with this one. <laughs> this one right here. Let it go. Don't try to force anything. I thought about the creativity as well. I thought that I said I told my wife. I said, listen, man, he should just resort to just speed. Be flashy. Allow give the fans something to look at. Be flashy in and out and give the fans something to look at because this guy ain't going to give you anything other than that. You know what I mean? Um, like to your point, going down, dipping down to his level, giving him any inclination that I, if I let this go, I might do some damage and actually end up doing that. I was glad that, that Jared didn't even attempt to do that. I also thought that it showed his maturity in the ring for him not to force things, you know? I can speak as a fighter. When we get frustrated, we actually force things. It's very rare, maybe for heavyweights, that we get frustrated and we just re pull we back. We had a on look things. on his fight like he was resigned to like, okay, this is gonna suck. Let me just keep doing what I'm doing, yeah. putting the putting the volume up. Yeah. Who cares if most of it's not landing? I'm winning every round. Let's yeah. get this over with. Yeah. Y'all. And go ahead. And despite everything we're saying, which is fair to Jared. Yeah. Ultimately, the criticism's gonna come because no one wants to see. The next great American heavyweight, you would hope, go the distance with a 5'9 cruiserweight. Mm -hmm. And so, you know what I mean? But I feel like we pointed out some fair things to explain why that happened. I was worried about him getting lulled to sleep. Yeah. I was like, Jared, stay composed. At all. But that shows the maturity, Sean. Mm -hmm. That shows he's getting to the point where he's actually thinking like a world champion. Because I'm like, don't go up in there and have one moment. Yeah. Cause every once in a while he would throw some shit. Yeah, the dude would throw yeah. like a counter punch. And of course I hyped Mary up in the last round too. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah. That was I'm like, this the last round, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. I was like, uh, this the don't if anything don't fall asleep yep. to your point and stay alert. You know, yeah. do it, do what you have to do to stay safe in the ring. But one thing we did see Jared improve on, man, he was able to get low, yeah. get under some of them hooks. What that does is that connects to what you, what you're training to do, connect to seeing it work in actual in in, in, in fight situation. Now that's something that's that's going to become a part of his muscle memory now mm -hmm. because it actually worked. You know, it's one thing to be working on something in the ring, in the gym and not take that to the ring. He mm -hmm. worked on it in the gym, took it to the ring. He saw the success, and now he should have he should have better defense moving forward beyond just that straight back stuff that he was doing before. Well, yeah, and Ant said he didn't see him do it a lot, but I, he still did it a couple times yeah. to oh, yeah, get away yeah. from those counters. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it's kind of uh, frustrating. You got a guy who's got a great jab out of both stances. Like you were joking about Ife, he don't got a jab. Well, Jared does. He's yeah, got he a does. jab out of both stances. Uh -huh. Fluid, fast, upper body movements there. So you got all these big boxes checked. Yeah. Is it, Look, I don't want to pretend to be able to tell you how to do it, but there's got to be a way you could tuck your chin and, yeah. and, and find other <laughs> things on other looks on defense besides pulling out with the chin mm -hmm. exposed. Mm -hmm. um, and, then, and, and part of me wonders with top rank, you know, Bruce and Brad, the matchmakers, was this uh, supposed to be an easy fight against a blown up cruiserweight because Jared's had some issues, you know, recently mm -hmm. and you don't want to match him too tough. You mm -hmm. want this one mm -hmm. to get or those guys are great at. Each, each opponent on the ladder up fulfilling a purpose, right? We're, we're going to give you a puncher, but a limited puncher. Mm -hmm. We're going to give you a fast guy, but but some type of flaw so that he doesn't ruin the process by knocking you off. And right. We'll give you a pressure guy. We'll give you a slick guy so that you face all these little boxes and so that when you get to the top level, you got to face the guy who's got all of that, sure, right? Sure, sure, So maybe the purpose of that fight last night like was... I feel like you like the... That's like the road to building any fighter. Like, we want to see... But there's an art and a science looks, to it, right? Hey, yeah, hey, yeah, I never but, heard it like that. So he, he, <laughs> continue, continue. Right, okay? but, I'm sitting there enjoying the show. But those, okay? you know, those, those are the masters at it. And, <laughs> I and subscribe. So, so maybe the point of Mary, I don't know if he fulfilled it or not, was who can we find that's as fluid as him? Mm. That's, you know, that's not... Frank Sanchez would kind of fit that bill sure, too, but that's sure, a very... Sure. That's a big level fight. Yep, and so yep, yep. I, I'm like, maybe that's what Mary was brought in for. We got to bring up a cruiserweight because there's someone that can match him in fluidity and speed. And he kind of did. Yeah. You know, so that, that was probably the first time Jared was in with someone <sighs> as quick as he was. Yeah. But still that's, a terrible fight. That's why I like a jog back next because you got to get your head off the line. Yeah. You can't just pull back. He's long, tall, and he's throwing them things, Jared. But I think Jared will be all right. See, I'm trying to think of when it was, but this had to be 05, 06, 07 when I was in the Olympic program. They started working on us on moving laterally. 
stuff that we we already know how to do, but they started being very intentional about us moving laterally. Why? Because in the international, the international fighters knew that most American fighters are in and right out, in straight. Back. Are y'all basic? And they had studied us, and they know once the off once the offense of the American fighter stops, then you go right after them, and they're gonna go right back, and and one of those trailing shots is gonna score, and that's mm. how you beat the American fighter. So they started teaching us how to do our combination and turn left, do our combination and turn right. Obviously, you see the 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 sped up professional version of it. What I would do, my dad was saying, get off the line, one two three, pivot. You saw a lot of pivots when I box, and it's because something that we had learned even in the amateurs. So when you see someone like Jared Anderson having that straight back um, defensive movement, that exit strategy is straight back. That is traditional with American fighters, and I think that that's something that while we're looking at him saying, yo, why you know. The only thing he got to do is fix this. Man, that's something that's been identified a long time ago about American fighters. You know, so that's a bad technique that he's learned growing up. It's his muscle memory. What you do to add to 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 fix it, you, you stop allowing him to use that technique in training. Now everything has to be pivot left, pivot left, pivot left, pivot right, pivot right, pivot right. Step over, step over, step over, not step back. And like I'm doing with the kids that I'm training, when you do something wrong, drop down, give me some push-ups. My dad would make us, and we dropped our hands in, in training. We was holding weights at the end of training until we was crying. You know what I mean? There's ways to beat those techniques out of a fighter. Can you still do that kind of stuff with a 24-year-old pro, though? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. What I mean, you, with you the mean push-ups like, and the weights? And man, all. you got to. Okay. You got to. You know, you got to. You got to. Or you or you show him like what I, what I would do. Show him Charles Martin. Watch that fight every day until you realize that that you're still making that move in sparring and you can't make that move anymore. You know what I mean? So that's what I would do. But man, outside of that, he looked great. You know, didn't have much to work with last night. Terrible dance partner. Who knew? <laughs> you know, especially with the story coming into the ring about the you know the the upset victory the the guy Mary had so. over Tony Yoka, the gold medalist. Yeah. Right. So. Well, I mean, he he was the definition of a spoiler. They, yeah. they had a word, they call those guys spoilers, stinkers. They don't come to win, but they're very competent and, yeah. and good at making you go the distance and making you not do what you wanted to do that night. Yeah. So. What, so what y'all thinking? I got a couple of fights for y'all. Okay. Okay. Three. I was got Jock Bay. Joe Joyce. I don't want to move, I don't want to move him too fast. Joe Joyce, I mean... You're there. What, what are we thinking about? What? You don't like Joe Jerry? I just no, no. I mean, like he's almost forty, and he's had two tough knockout losses. To one of his best gifts was his punch resistance. Uh -huh. You know that may have taken a hit uh -huh. getting knocked uh -huh. out by Zhang, and uh -huh. you know I, yeah. I think Jared would handle that fight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, my last one. You're gonna be mad because he's forty. Zhang. See, a lot of people I feel like Zhang. would pick Zhang in that fight, and I would still mm. pick Jared. I'm going with Jared. Yeah. Yeah. But I would that's, a great, that's, that's a great, that's a great test. You know, it's a great, it's a test. great test. No, it's a great test. Thing. You're talking about the fluidity, the size, yeah. the speed, yeah. the movement, even the power. I mean, yeah. that's the next step. That's one of them fights that he needs right now. Yeah. If, if, the, what are you about to do? Are we going to stay at this level or are we going to take the step? Especially, you know, top rank, y'all should know that he's on the clock. He put himself on the clock. You know yeah. what I mean? So how much does he want to do this? You had a conversation with him. Hey, how, how long... You know, we can get you to a championship. You will win the championship. Do you want it? And come back to me. Let me know if you want it. And if you do, this is our strategy moving forward. I think a Zhang makes sense if you're trying to get to a championship title. Again, if he's on the clock and he's saying, yo, I'm done in three years. Let's get him Let's get him FA this year. And then let's get him Zhang at the end of this year. You know what I mean? Like, don't forget, we only in March. Or we, we only in April, April now. You know, damn, we almost at the end of April. But you st he still could pull off two year two more fights before the end of this year. Fighters got to get busy. I mean, he's in the top five of three of the four sanctioning bodies. Mm -hmm. Top five. And yeah, I like the Flip Hergovic fight too. Because yeah. Hergovic is number one with the IBF. Mm -hmm. nah, that's a um, tough fight. Now, it's a very that's, tough that's fight because he has a good right yeah, hand over the top yeah, of the jab. And if you pull out, he could catch you pulling out nasty with the right hand. I still think Jared has more looks yeah. and more talent than him, but that, that's a really good fight. Very right. beatable. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, hey, again, figure out what you want to see. Are you here for exciting uh, competitive fights yeah. or you just want to see 
uh, uh, one dog continue to be a dog. You know what I mean? Let's even when we talking about Tank Davis, everybody's saying, "Well, who's gonna challenge him?" Shakur Steven, who's gonna challenge him? All these other fighters. What do y'all want? Because when y'all get the challenge, y'all saying, "Oh, he ain't that. He ain't this. He ain't that." No, he is. He just was in the ring with another one. Right. You know what I mean? It's more than one of us out. One of them out there. Right. You know what I mean? So I think uh, that would be a great fight, and I, I like that fight. I like the Sanchez fight too, Frank Sanchez. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. Oh, I got, I got something before that. Yeah. Give him Dylan White. Yeah. No, let don't him give retire Dylan White. White. No, why, why y'all hate Dylan Get White? Get out of here! No, he ain't gonna retire Dylan yes. White. Yes. <laughs> okay, okay, I got another. One. I'll say y'all like that one. I got another. One. Okay, Luis Ortiz. No. Y'all like that either? No. Luis, Why? Luis, Luis ain't getting back in the ring, damn it. <laughs> For the right amount of money, he will. If he's fighting an old guy, let's see Zhang. Listen, before okay. we get so to... So we like the first three. We yeah. got to preview uh, Haney and Garcia. We got a little, We got some time left. But we got to get to this whole madness uh, on uh, this whole Noah, uh, Noah Inoue uh, madness oh, on Twitter. <laughs> he said, no, I know a thing or two I ain't in this. I know a thing or two about, you know... Running into issues, it's problems. A, man, I just <laughs> listen. Let him for context. If you did, I don't know if they clicked it wrong or what. The question that was presented to me by Jim: Do you think this is? Do you think anyway should come to the United States? Not do you think he needs to come to the United States? If he said needs, I heard should. <laughs> so let me go, <laughs> let me go record for saying that. But basically, what I was trying to convey to the audience is I think that it de- this is exactly what I said. I think it depends on what Niola Inoue wants. Does he want to be a star in boxing or does he want to be a star in Japan? He's clearly a star in Japan. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go on record for saying it. I wouldn't leave Japan. If I'm a star at home, why would I leave home? There's no point. As quiet as it's kept, I ain't want Tim Zoo coming over to the United States. And I, I'm on record for talking to his promotional team about him coming to us. I said, why y'all want to leave this? He said, nah, man, he wants to be an American. He wants to, he wants to expand. And that's what life is. Boxing is just like life. I'm on, I'm on record for saying that, and I'll let both of y'all speak. But I'm on record for saying like, boxing is just like life. In life, you do what you do at home, and at some point you have to expand and do or become more. If that's what you want to do. You got family and Bunky. They ain't never left Bunky. Mm-hmm. They good. Mm-hmm. They don't want to leave Bunky. They nice, sorry, Bunky. they nice and comfy and they stars in Bunky. <laughs> yeah. And I'm proud of them and I'm good for them. But yeah. if you want to do more, if you want to be more, yeah. you have to expand. What does that mean? Usually in the sport of boxing, that means coming to the United States. So mm-hmm. that's basically what I was trying to say. Yo, I'm good with you being over there. If you good with you being over there. But if you want to be the star, a big star in boxing... I think you kind of need to come over to the United States because that's kind of where it go. That's the the crossroads for every fighter in the world of boxing is coming through the United States. There's a lot to unpack. Yeah, I, man, I, 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 that's why right, that's why with you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> give, give me a minute to unpack all this. So, first of all, it, it's crazy. He, Sean's such a good guy, and everyone just wanted to kill him over this opinion he had. Like, it's, it's crazy to me. But <laughs> he, so, well, I think with, like, what you're saying, Sean, it's always historically and traditionally been true. It, Lennox Lewis came here, Roberto Duran, um, Manny Pacquiao, Ricky Hatton, Tim Zhu, you know, for recent, every, uh, yeah, so... You know, Canelo fights here. He does as big as he is in Mexico. He fights the United States. Eventually, so. Joe Calzaghe. Eventually, Joe Calzaghe. Even yeah. right, right. Yeah. So, but it is 2024, and boxing in some ways, you know, is more niche than it than it even was in, the, in many of those fighters' times. And you know, even to get a deeper period, America. I, I would never want to live anywhere else. This is, I love my country. Me, I love the United too. States. Me but, <laughs> but we are, you know. Thirty plus trillion dollars in debt, and maybe, maybe in some ways, our stars. We'll talk anyway. about that on the Puerto Rico. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll anyways, but <laughs> I hear you. That's over my my head, anyways. But did you know we was in debt? <laughs> no, that was, I knew we was. Are I we all in debt. Or yeah, you in debt too. Your I'm money goes to the debt. Yeah. Or even, or even to take it to, you know, another great uh, Japanese not fighter but artist, Akira Toriyama, the guy who made Dragon Ball Z, died a couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. One reason he was so celebrated around the world was his art was, you know, made in the United, not made, it was, you know, transcribed in the United States, yeah, yeah. translated in yeah. the United States. Yeah. So, 
he was able to grip the whole world and not yeah. just, you know, Japan. Yeah. But the thing is, for Inoue, uh, he's fought here three times, won all three, two of them by really expressive knockout. Mm -hmm. And it's like, we got to give him something to work with. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, we, we gave him Das Marinas, Maloney, and Mick Williams Arroyo. Yeah. He, the first one was on a HBO undercard, mm -hmm. you know, at StubHub. Mm -hmm. So we got to give him something to work with here. If he were to fight the Mexican champion, say he went to 26 and fought Venado, those fights could make some good money and sell some good crowds in California or Vegas on the West Coast where there's a lot of Mexican fans. He went to 130, same thing with Navarrete. Mm -hmm. But those fights would still make more money in Japan. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, he's, he's making, you know, 10 plus million dollars every fight. Uh, the, the, the media market isn't quite as, you know, monopolized by the West and the United States as it once was. Mm -hmm. So some things have changed there. I got to fight for you, Sean, because I definitely don't think we've seen him for the final time in America. He uh -huh. will fight here again, oh, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, Prince Nassim, he fought Kevin Kelly in the garden, fought a New Yorker in the garden. That, that gave him what he needed in mm -hmm. America, that mm -hmm. juice. Mm -hmm. Give Bruce Carrington 24 months. Ooh. Give him two years. Two years, That might because he's 26. He's not yeah. 21. Yeah. Give Bruce Carrington 24 months. He's ranked number five by the WBO right now, right? Let him get that WBO strap. Let him unify something. You know that Inoue is going to go to 26. Mm -hmm. So get a belt on Carrington so that he has to go through Carrington. Mm -hmm. Fight could probably still make more money in Japan just because of the mm -hmm. monster star, pun yeah. intended, I guess, that yeah. he is there. Yeah. But Shushu Carrington could be his Kevin Kelly at Madison Square Garden. Ooh. That fight could sell out Madison Square Garden. Ooh. And Shushu is fast and talented and Brooklyn tough and he's got pulls and in an exciting style, though. Mm -hmm. He's not going to come to maturity just... Maturity, too. Yes. Sorry to cut you off, but maturity, too. That's really big for me when it comes to fighters because you're getting in the ring with somebody like Nioa. You 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 have to look past his... Um, like, the, the everything that he is. And it's, it's you, you get to a point when you are mature enough to do that. Not a lot of young fighters are mature enough to do that, so... Um, Bruce definitely is mature along with, you know, experience and skill and everything else. Shout out to Shushu because he's coming in this, into the studio next week. So we'll see what he got for us next week. He might have some big news for us. Yeah. And I was saying, uh, I was thinking, I've, like you said, they make more money over there. So I get what Tom Rink's doing and everything. I think they missed their mark with Cool Boy. I thought Cool Boy should have been in the States. You let him uh, perform against Cool Boy's gonna bring him out. Yeah. That was gonna sell out at the yeah. Barclays, or whatever. Yeah. That'd have been a chance for him to stamp his way in America. Yeah, could, look who I am. That could have worked. You know, that yeah. could have worked. But but I, they, the bag was probably bigger in Japan. That's that's gonna and, be the doubt, problem every time. I think Carrington is a top rank fighter. He's yeah. already with top rank a new way. You could put it at the Garden, the big room at the Garden. Mm -hmm. I think a lot there's a lot of Japanese people that live in in New York City in the five boroughs. So that that's my that's I don't I'm not saying shoo shoo you know Brooklyn stand up. I'm not saying it's gonna happen like Hamed and Kevin Kelly have went down in '97. Right, 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 but right. but that's his. I think that's his uh, Kevin Kelly. Yeah, I think shoo. that's his Madison Square Garden fight. Shoo shoo knocking him off. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Well, listen, man. Bottom line, I wasn't. Trying to disrespect Japan. I know. I wa wasn't trying to disrespect NUA. You know, it wasn't definitely wasn't trying to disrespect uh, their their uh, mode of operation and how they've done things. The question that was presented to me: Do you think he should come here? Of course, the time difference when you, when it comes to watching a a, a fight in Japan, uh, NUA fight is the, the the hours crazy over here. So you know, just for those selective. Reasons. That's why the question was presented to me. Shout out to Pro Box TV. Y'all keep getting me in trouble, and I'm gonna quit. <laughs> yeah, Pro Box TV. Stop bringing that BS to the Four Away Podcast. <laughs> this is like the third, fourth time we have to address something because of your nonsense over there. And you know, get it together. You know, now you uh -oh. mentioned you mentioned uh, that fight could have happened in America against Fulton being mm -hmm. an American, and then Sean mentioned Calzaghe after winning all those fights in the United Kingdom, came to fight Bernard and Roy in the United mm -hmm, States. Mm -hmm. um, I guess that the Fulton fight was his Jeff Lacey fight mm -hmm. against Calzaghe. You know, he beat the American over there. Yeah. Okay. And now you got America saying, like, come over here and yeah. fight. You know, okay, yeah. you beat Jeff. We wanted to see you fight, yeah. you know, Bernard now. And so yeah. that, that's the next step. That was a brutal fight. Uh, that's the only fight I ever watched, watched him. Let's move on. Um, we got... This weekend. Devin Haney. No, you ain't even going to be there, so... Shh. 
Uh, we got I'm Devin Haney. Watch him at a fight party. And, <laughs> and uh, Ryan Garcia getting in the ring. And his fight party reactions go viral. Ask Canelo. So. <laughs> you gonna do some fight party reactions? <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is bad. Yeah. All right, all right. I'm I, hit you up while I'm there. Huh? I'm gonna hit you up while I'm there. While you at the fight, you gonna hit me I'm up? I'm hit you up while okay, I'm at the right, fight. Cool. Yeah. While in between fights. Okay, no, no I don't want to do, do all that. No, 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 we're not doing all that, okay? <laughs> you were trying to do too much. Break it down. Uh, what, what we got on the main, uh, 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 the undercard? Did, did you see anything? We got Scrappy. Charles Conwell. Oh, Charles is in the ring. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. So who is he? He's with Golden Boy now. He finally oh, okay, got a promoter. Okay, he got a promoter. Okay. okay. Because he, the man worked his way to the number one spot without yeah. one. Props yeah, to him. Yeah, yeah, Ohio yeah, Tough. Yeah. Olympian. Yeah. Um, Still fighting at 154. Yes. Uh, was in line to fight Tim Zhu. Um, now, obviously, should be in line to fight uh, Fundora, um, which that would be a fun fight. <laughs> Pun intended. That would be a fun fight. Uh, Charles Conwell, um, who's he in the ring with? Uh, an, an Italian, Vittori. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, he has been yeah. handling the job whenever he's actually they, didn't check his country of origin. So. I saw the last name and said, well, yeah, I, got okay. I, I got no you. Tri- it's all good. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all wild. Charles has been man. handling the business when he, when he gets in the ring. So, um, you guys, I hope <laughs> he, hope you guys enjoy he's fighting. Uh, that fight. I thought he was there. fighting Vittori. When I looked up, oh, that's Thomas Lamana's fighting. Oh, uh, oh. yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, there we go. Go ahead. Good boxer. I don't know why it doesn't um, have it listed. Uh, strong fighter. Yeah. Um, I, if you ain't seen Charles Conwell, man, this this will be a treat. Um, Cleveland's finest now, you know, along with obviously with Tiger Johnson and a few others out there. Um, so I'm looking forward to having him in the ring, uh, doing some things with him. Where I will be working the zone on fight night, so I'm excited about that. Uh, any anybody else of note? Um, you got Scrappy? Barboza, Scrappy Ramirez. My oh, boy, John. John, I shout out to John. John. Don't like that. That's his real oh, name. Yeah, right, 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 right. I didn't know until really recent that he was an MMA fighter. Scrappy? Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't know that. Okay. Had a six and seven record. Uh, he's good in the pocket. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, he's good in the pocket. He's scrappy. Yeah. <laughs> he's scrappy. Straight up. Straight up. Like he's straight up he is. Is. He's John, but he's scrappy. He's got that uh, little bit of that street element to him, too. Yeah, he carries yeah, that into yeah. the ring with him. He has that star power. He got something. Yeah. He got something. Yeah. 100. He just get him a belt. He's on. I saw mm-hmm. him walk out after a big fight at the MGM one night. He looked like he, he had like this red suit on. I told him, you look like you're on Death Row Records, you know? <laughs> <laughs> He's a cool dude. Yeah. But, Let, man, let's get to this main event, man. man. I think this one, it's been it's been a long time coming. Uh dating back to when they first turned pro, but I mean I just feel like when they made the announcement of this fight during Super Bowl weekend, it, it just like blew up instantly and it's been a long time coming. Most people didn't wasn't sure whether or not we get here. Yeah. I don't even want to talk about all that. I do obviously that will play into, you know, kind of the X's and O's right. of how we think the fight's gonna play out as a whole. But, you know, my thing is we got two young fighters that are relatively hungry, um, in their own in their own respects. And go ahead, and I just think Ryan Garcia's on an ass whooping tour. Damn. I think it goes tank, Devin, Teal. Or well, it's gonna be something secure. in between because he had the he had the fight in between uh, Tank Duarte. and this one. Yeah, it's so a, he gotta have he. he, he not worry about that. But he kicked somebody's ass. All right. No, 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 it's, no, no. It's him going. Around. He just has the name that he's gonna keep, keep going around getting his ass whooped. <laughs> That's why I think happens with with Ryan Garcia. I think he wants the money, but uh, to this fight, man, uh, and does not have to interview these people. <laughs> <laughs> like, nah, we, uh, we actually text. I no, think he probably right. stopped okay, texting okay. me because of the okay, okay. way I be talking over here. Man, listen. But, uh, uh, man, I'm looking forward Good. to this fight. I just think Devin Haney is in his prime right now in uh, Juggernaut. Ryan in his prime. Uh, uh, juggernaut. <laughs> Chill, <just> let, <laughs> juggernaut. The kid always wor- worried about the kid. Heart, power. He showed me a lot of that in the last couple of fights. I couldn't believe how he did Regis. Man, Regis, tough, gritty. Uh, just dominated the kid from start to finish. Put him down once. I think he hurt him again. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ryan, man, I just hope Ryan's focused for this fight. You need to be 110% against Devin Haney. Is Devin Haney prime yet? Is, is, uh, is answering this... it. I don't think we're quite there still, actually. That's 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 yeah. what's scary. Yeah. And, and it's like, like clearly entering it. Yeah, and he's... Yeah. yeah. I'm like, is the kid growing? I feel like the kid's getting bigger in fights. <laughs> like he's starting to look like a welterweight at 140. Supposed to. Yeah, looking like what? I just worry. What does Ryan have? I know he got the 
the left hook. One 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 dimensional fighter can't beat Devin Haney. Not even close. Not even a two. Not even maybe a three. He's going to have to dig deep in his bag, kind of like Sean didn't get the win, but Sean versus Earl Spence. De- Ryan going to have to have a plan B, plan C. Plan- Just keep going. D, E. Keep going, baby. Damn. Does Ryan got that much in his bag besides that left hook? Well, Derek's trying to, you know, Derek's working on his catch and shoot game. Mm-hmm. And what the, the two the two improvements I saw from Derek, and it's, it's, it's a trademark of his, is throwing more punches per round. And he handled the pace pretty well. Uh, it wasn't tired at his media day. Throw a lot of punches. Mm-hmm. And the catch and shoots. Mm-hmm. But the problems I saw is a lot of it kind of fell apart when Ryan had to move his feet forward. Mm-hmm. And and when now, now when he was able to plant his feet and throw his combinations with Derek, Derek looked like he's working on putting his punches together, better punch selection other than just looking for the left hook or that big straight right hand. That's all good stuff, but how often is Devin Haney going to let you plant your feet? Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, you as, as, a, as to how I think this fight goes, you were talking earlier about how the American style, you know, in and out, right? And Devin, he still did that against Regis in dominating that fight. Um, maybe he could have got a stoppage if he sat down on the counters a little bit, did a little of this, a little of that, whatever. It was still a great shutout. That, but in this fight, if he's in and out again, because he could win the fight easy doing that. Because Ryan's feet aren't the best, just like Regis's feet weren't the best. Mm-hmm. And the guy's got power. So if he's in and out, he might have to settle for a decision. Mm-hmm. So one thing I want to kind—I kind of want to see from Devin in this fight is the the counter punching, and in particular the right hand. Yeah. You know, and be a, a little bit like Terrence did did Spence, where he's not just in and out. He is his feet are planted, little half steps back but not all the way out to where you can't sit down on the counter. If Devin mixes in some of that, maybe, or, or it may not, might, might not even have to come that way. Yeah. Maybe it's just stepping on the gas, stepping to him a little bit as the fight goes on and yeah. you're gaining control and you could stop him that way. But, that, would, yeah, yeah what do you think of that? Uh, what, I, I think if Ryan gives up ground, he gets stopped. I think Maybe if trying to fight I mean, off his kind of right. either way. Yeah. You know, if you're giving up ground, Devin's going to get... He's already come into the ring with a, a, so much momentum. You, you is just you know pouring out of him. Um, but I think the other side of that too. I mean, he could be aggressive and go get him if he feels like Ryan ain't ain't for it. Tighten it, to pick him up and if, step to if him. If Ryan and, ain't able yeah. to defend things, if Ryan starts taking steps back, Devin is definitely going to step forward and take it away from him. The thing that. I think he feels challenged by what his dad keeps saying. His dad keeps saying he is the face of boxing. They went on FaceTime today, and he was asking Devin, are you going to put him on his back? And Devin guaranteed this morning a knockout. Guaranteed. He never does that. They went on... On FaceTime on Instagram this Instagram morning. The dad and the... And, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know FaceTime. You don't know I do it most of all times. Yeah. But that validates what I was just about to say. He takes it as a challenge, and he's accepting the challenge to become the face of boxing. I think they believe that this is that fight that makes him the face of boxing. Mm -hmm. I still don't know. I don't know if this is especially Ryan has done so much outside of the ring to kind of kind of spoil a lot of what could happen for the Haney's moving forward. He stops him, Sean. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, If he stops. him. Oh, yeah. But you're still going to get a lot of people saying, well, Ryan is Ryan. But to the point of all that. He's accepting the challenge to become the face of boxing. I think he wants to be the face of boxing. Step into him. If Ryan ain't, 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 ain't for it, he going to get it that way. I could also see if he start if he takes the half step back and comes back with quick counters, that's mm. another way to get it done. You know, what's the what's the what's the the the, the road to success for 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 Garcia? You know, I look at it from a psychological standpoint and I just I really do believe that Ryan is going to come to the ring thinking that he can match him speed for speed, power for power, movement for movement, defense for defense. The list goes on. I truly think that they're going to, that that's what Ryan and his team believe. Obviously, a round or two, if there's no success, that may alter some things. But when you look at the, 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 the history of these fighters, why is it important to look at the history? Because even though they were kids, 
you still you 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 had this experience, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's almost like like when you line up to race somebody and everybody could connect. Y'all been on some races before. You line up. I race. I race. Uh, yeah, you, Michael. Michael you Smoked know what I mean? Him. Yeah, that was like two years ago. Smoked you a grown ass man racing. Yeah. So I know y'all was kids <laughs> racing at one point in time. When you race the same person and you lose to them or you beat them, y'all ten years down the line. <laughs> oh, you remember what I did to you? Da 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 da. You're connected to beating this person. It don't matter where you've been in life. It don't matter what you did, what they did. You're still connected to the fact that you beat this person before. That The fact that you've seen them legs move before. He done seen the arms move before. He done seen the fists before. So I think they're going to be connected, man. I don't think Ryan Garcia beats Haney, but I do believe we're going to get a surprise in this fight. Okay. I don't know what that surprise is going to be, but uh, and y'all already know me, man. I'm a, I'm a optimi- I'm optimistic at, at its finest. I don't even know if that's the word. Uh, is that the word? Optim- Maybe optimist at sometimes I'm a, at fault. It's I'm by a, fault. I'm, I'm yeah, yeah, optimist yeah, yeah, yeah. at, at, at you no, know fault, yeah. to 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 to, 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 a, to a fault. I mean. full, to its fullest degree. <laughs> <laughs> to its fullest yeah. degree. So with that being said, I definitely when you talk about him landing that that hook, he's only got a hook. When you got an eye for the hook, it don't matter. If this mm-hmm. the only punch I got. Uh, uh, Deontay Wilder is is a prime example of that. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I think that the hook is always gonna be there for him as long as he has the confidence to throw it. If you close your eyes and you've seen yourself hit this kid Devin Haney with this left hook before, you able to actually manifest that and make it happen. So well, I'm I mean, on record for saying I think uh, something crazy. I worry happen. about him getting lulled to sleep because I think he got lulled with a uh, tank. When that moment where he turned it up for no reason. He turned take, it up for that was that his was fault. That was no reason. <laughs> that was his fault. And then we obviously we know Haney don't got tank power, but yeah. it just don't well, be he was hyped up. You know what I mean? Well, that you was can't be hyped moment. up in a world championship and fight this like kid that. Do not control his emotions, so I could definitely it see the same thing happen. Fight. Oh yeah. yeah. He just <laughs> it was a big fight, but it wasn't title. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. And, and well, I, mean, I don't happen. think he felt that was his inexperience showing. Yeah. He, he skipped two or three levels to, to make that big money in the tank fight and certainly got that big money, yeah. but it cost him competitively, you know, heading into that fight. I think Garcia's path to victory is if his catch and shoots are on point and they're really working with Derek and he's able to just walk Devin down, um, you know, and, and, and being in this weight class, just being stronger than he was for the tank fight. But I, I think that's his path to victory is if he's walking down and catching very well with Derek. But I... I don't. I, I think I think I Haney because you need more than the good high guard and the catch and shoot yeah. to to get through a, a guy who could pick you apart like Devin. So yeah. what I'm expecting from Ryan, I'll call it bottled chaos for three rounds. For three those first three rounds, he's gonna be at his most dangerous because mm-hmm. that's before Devin really starts to figure him out and yeah. get a beat on him. Yeah. So I think in those first three rounds, you it may be looking like, oh shit, Ryan's gonna get him. Like yeah. Ryan could do this. And then after those three rounds or so, that that bottled chaos is gonna dissipate and disintegrate. Why you call it bottled chaos? Because he's carrying a lot of chaos with him into the ring. Yeah. And I think for three rounds, it's gonna be bottled up in a way that's effective for him. Uh But but it'll begin to be undone by the smarter fighter who's picking him apart and adjusting to him round by round. And that golf and class and experience and skills is going to show more and more as the fight goes on. If you Derek James and you ain't told this kid, Ryan Garcia, you you need to be ready to make adjustments every round. You need to be Mm -hmm. ready to step up every round. That's that's what it takes at the the highest level. If you've been to the highest level, you've performed at the highest level being Derek James, and you know what it feels like, you know what, what it takes... You have to impart that. You have to translate that. You have to give that to the fighter that even though he's been there before, he didn't he didn't truly uh, perform at that high level. You now have to give this fighter that way of thinking, that way of operating, that way of using his energy and things like that. Go ahead. Yeah, and I just hope Derrick James just has a plan B. I don't feel like I felt Derrick James kind of sent Terrence, not Terrence, Earl into the ring to be Earl Spence. And I felt like it was nothing else. No plan B to beat Terrence Crawford. It would just be you. Well, Derek, you know, great trainer, one trainer of the year for a reason, yeah, yeah, multiple yeah, yeah, yeah. times, right? So well, I don't, Great you know, fighters. But he's got a little something to prove if he, if he wants yeah. to remain one of the, the very, very best because he's actually talked, I think he said in an interview recently that these fighters I'm working with now are the last ones and I'm done. Mm. And, you know, um, 
you know, a year ago, it's like he has Joshua, he has Ryan, he has Frank, he has Charlo, he has Spence. Now it's like we don't know if his, his Spence is going to continue to work with him. Joshua left for Ben Davison. Um, you know, Frank Martin is still Frank Martin. But if, if you knew Frank Martin before he got to Derek, most of the stuff, Derek got him holding his lead glove a little differently. You know, Derek has his imprint. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the stuff that Frank does, he was able to do before he got to Derek. Mm -hmm. And then Jermel Charlo, when he knocked out Castaño to become undisputed, he leaned heavily into Joan Guzman for those adjustments. It was... That was the Joan Guzman imprint, mm. fighting off the ropes, sliding off the ropes, throwing combinations. That's how Guzman used to fight. Mm -hmm. And Jermel was working with him a lot heading into that fight. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Derek's always been an excellent trainer, but his star has dimmed a little bit in yeah. the last year, and this would be a huge win for him. Yeah. So, and, and talking about plan Bs, I don't know. I, it, Derek's always shown the high guard, the catch and shoots, mm -hmm. the busy activity. Yeah. But, uh, you know, head movement and adjustments and things like that that's not always been a part of what he brings to the table for his fighters so i, I don't know you know we'll see yeah so yeah well, this this weekend we'll live live up to it i remember him telling me that uh I think you was over the Spence Crawford fight, or you just said it wouldn't live Right, up. right. And, and I yeah. said Crawford, I never got to live it. I said, oh, I told y'all that counter punching was going to be the, the thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> but, That's funny. Uh, Listen, yeah. uh, you know, when there's something big going on, we uh, the Puerto Rican podcast media blitz is happening as well. Um, mm -hmm. Zatel might come, in and, come, might come and mess around with us a little bit. And you in the building for us at all? Nah, or no, I ain't going to be in the yeah. building. Unless I do a 24-hour, I'm... I'll be on the time crunch. I might, I might, I might. He might, he might make it happen. Yeah, I might, I might come in in 24 hours. Give you guys a schedule real quick. I know it'll be in the description. Um, Wednesday, we got the uh, media workout uh, at Gleason's Boxing Gym. Don't show up because you can't get in. And don't say you with me because you're not with me. Uh, but I want you to tune in on the Puerto Rico podcast. Um, this is all on the podcast, not the Patreon. So... Don't get it confused, man. We live there uh, three o'clock. Uh, the uh, the way the workout started at four o'clock, so we'll be at Gleason's for a couple of hours on Wednesday, uh, Thursday, of course, the the final press conference. That is uh, at um, the main card is at three p.m. The final press conference Thursday, three p.m. right here live, Portaway Podcast YouTube channel. Uh, Friday we got the weigh in. Mm -hmm. Ceremony away in. They actually put ceremony away in. They kept in it, it real. At two, right, right. <laughs> at two, they said, we can't keep doing this. What do you think? Would you have liked that? To, to get your way in done? I would have rather that my guy, <laughs> man. I'm yeah. like, damn, Sean missed this moment. I heard a couple of people, and I've, I know I've, I've said this a couple of times, people would like to see the fighters. They like yeah, to see the rawness <laughs> of a fighter getting on the scale. They want to see the eyes. They want to see if the cheek the cheekbones are sucked in. Yep. They want to see if the fighter's yeah, still sucks, sweating man. and all that kind of stuff. Because... Like I said before, a lot of people actually used to wait. I don't know if they still do. A lot of people used to wait on the way in to make their picks Please. with certain fights. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. they felt like... Chris Algieri like, told me that at Canelo Charlo. He said, I want to see each guy's energy at the way in See? Yeah. yeah. So, um, But ceremonial way in is at 2 o'clock. Then we're going to be live. And let me get this, this barbershop. And then sure enough, Charlo, he, he, you could tell he was a guy moving up from 54. Mm -hmm. You know, the way in can definitely affect how you think the fight's going to go. So. Yeah. Then we'll be live at a classic cut barbershop. You going somewhere else? Yeah, six p.m. You going? You're not going to our spot. Oh yeah, no, no, no. We 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 gotta we gotta. Oh we, man, we, I apologize. We gotta, my we gotta, my boy, I'm gonna hit you up. We man. gotta do it anyway. Need to be doing. We gotta expand. Oh man. <laughs> no, no, no. We going somewhere else, man. You know I ain't coming. You to New know York. I'm gonna go say what's up to him yeah, though. That's our guy. Yeah, man. you don't even know his name. I'm talking about the barbershop. Yeah, I know. What's the barbershop, man? <laughs> Andy, to shout out to too. Kid Hyphen. Yeah, to yeah, yeah, shout out to Andy. He'll yeah. be there. Yeah. Dane, Listen, DDA. We, we do actually want you to show up there if you're in Brooklyn. You want to come cool out with us. Uh, 1135 Street, John's Place, Brooklyn, New York, 11213. Classic Cut Barbershop. We'll be in there um, with Prince on Friday. 6 p.m. Pacific, or excuse me, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you're not in Brooklyn, come kick it with us on the podcast, and we're going to do it like that. And if you can't make it to Brooklyn, we'll be at the Fan Expo set up out there. It was that May the 4th. I don't know. Actually, I don't know if Sean going to be there. Sean got a lot going on. I don't even know if he realized. You supposed to be in Texas that day? 
Yeah, you're supposed to be in Texas. No, I'm not. That? No, I'm not. Yeah, Shut you, up. No, I'm not. Okay, right. <laughs> no, I'm not. Yeah, I'm they, supposed to be here. All right, because they've yeah. asking me if I'm coming. I'm and, like, and if I'm supposed to be in Texas, dude, y'all better make the check bigger. <laughs> I'm supposed to be here. Yeah, it's hard to miss that. Uh, uh, my, my agents wouldn't mess that up. No, okay. I, I'm not double booked. I'm double booked, but I'm double booked in Las Vegas. I'm not double booked Las Vegas and Houston. Real quick, let's pull up the Box Fan Expo. Uh, we got new, uh, more inten- attendees, just so they want to make sure you guys are aware who you going to see. And uh, sh- we got we actually got a special announcement. Zytel will be at the table with us. Oh, okay. Yeah. With, De- Devin Haney. <laughs> with some Zytel merch. Edgar this- Berlanga. <laughs> We're going to get you some merch. Lennox Lewis. Lennox. Le- Le- no, Lennox Lewis, yeah, yeah, uh, Mia yeah. St. John. I think that's all we got uh, for this one. Yeah, so um, I know uh, Clarissa Shields is going to be there. Quite a few other uh, big names are going to be there. So you guys make sure you uh, click the link below and you buy your tickets. Come hang the out rapper, with us. The rapper, Clarissa Shields? Yeah, yeah. yeah. She'll be in no, the She got rapper. 16. Oh, you oh, used to rap? Yeah. Oh, she's yeah. not. Yeah, yeah. Nice. kind of good. Was it yeah. nice? Not bad. No, you used to bad. rap, right? No. Oh. Just listen to a lot of it. Uh, yeah. Still, always. <laughs> Hip hop head. And you used to do the beats. <laughs> what you laughing at? You used to do the beats. <laughs> and you used to be on the table like. <laughs> I didn't do those beats. <laughs> Whatever, man. Uh, anything else, sir? No. We working on the name of his platform. You will see him with us. I'm sorry. He named it Sean Zatel. And that was it. We're gonna get that Come together. On. We're gonna get him. some Sean's I tell merch. It's gangster. We're gonna get his setup better. <laughs> it's our guy, man. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 <laughs> that was what, on, whatever man. we can do to help good. him, we will. Yeah. That's what that's what that's what brotherhood is about right there. Whatever uh, we can do to help him. You were um uh, my my motivation my motive for the motivation last week. Um and it was just don't be afraid to uh to 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 um do do what needs to be done. Um don't be afraid to put yourself out there and go for it. Um, you might surprise yourself, um, and I, like I told you, I look forward to you s- proving some things to yourself. I think we all could afford to do some things, get outside of the boxes that we're in, and prove to ourselves that there's more that we can do. Um, this week, just you're in here, so this is what just came to my mind: is just don't, never stop. You know, it's it's very very simple, um, but I have what I call mantras. I have little key words, little key phrases that I use. I, I always used them when I trained. I always used them before I got in the ring. I didn't use them in the ring, but I damn sure used them in the locker room before I fought. And uh, they got me through a lot. Um, Never Stop is one of those simple ones right there where, mm. you know, it just it will remind you uh, to, to keep your eye on the prize, to keep your eyes looking forward, not to look back, not to, to live in the past, but just to keep moving forward and, and, and working for whatever it is you're trying to do in life. So it's a simple one this weekend, but, um, but I think uh, this one should hit home for just about everyone on here. Never Stop. This is the Port Away. Stay blessed. Get him a Hennessy ad. Never stop, never settle. Isn't that it? I don't know. Yeah. I don't drink. I believe so. Hey, it's motivation, hey, and you don't and you don't end it with get an end the Hennessy ad. <laughs> you don't do that. Hey, when we was in Houston, uh, my cousin got a drink, and it was called a Charlie Sheen. Then they brought a drink out. I'm like, what the hell? It had a uh, Ziploc of Coke attached to it. Oh no, it didn't. But yeah, that was. I, but, but as it a was joke. Sugar. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. What? I was, <laughs> I was, I was like, like, wait a what minute, wait a minute. That's a shot. I don't drink. <laughs> I'm like, hey, somebody put this on my cousin's drink. And do you put it in the drink or you put it like you around like, the cup? Yeah, you like around the cup. Yeah, I was like, man, that's cute. Hey, well, yeah. hanging out. With, yeah. This is the port away. <laughs>